Hey, welcome to another question and answer. Boy, um, we missed you guys last week, um, but I hope you all had a happy fourth. Um, glad you're joining us for this. And as usual, um, we're going to have an exciting cl uh, question and answer, and we should tell you that it's been a very busy week here at Upholstery on Broadway. I did want to uh, start out with talking about Broadway Upholstery School dot com um, for all your supplied needs on there and if you see something that we don't have by all means ask us about it we've had some inquiries already about uh, for instance the clinch it Jimmy is actually interested in, in purchasing a clinch it one of our students who we'll get to in a minute on this but um, also a new feature that I'm really excited about uh, cushions um, we're offering online cushions and I think we've made it very simple for people to order cushions and I realized too that the pricing is, is very reasonable because uh, labor is a big portion of, stuff, of cushions. When somebody comes to me and they buy a cushion, I actually charge for labor to fill their cushions. And we have uh, tutorials on YouTube about how to do that. So our station has grown so much and we've got so much um, instruction on there that we felt offering cushions for people at home. Um, so the way it's going to work, it's going to be a good thing and you're going to save money. I mean, the way it's going to work is that you, you order the cushions and then you follow up with an email to us about the exact sizes. Okay, You can purchase the cushions ahead of time and then call me on the exact sizes. We have it worked out that uh, we have sofa cushions, we have chair cushions. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to get uh, the drop ship, we're going to ship it to you. Um, and you're going to get it in a box and it's going to be cryovac and uh, you're going to be able to stuff that cushion and you're going to look at our YouTube video about how to do that. We give you great tips on how to do that. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, so that's the new thing that I wanted to talk about. And also a lot going on with the, uh, with the Chippendale sofa, the custom made sofa that we, that we found that we're going to be restoring. And uh, we've already, I, we, as you probably already know, uh, people have uh, picked the velvet as a, as a fabric, and now we're going to be doing the colors. Um, and I just wanted to show you the colors here um, that Michaela picked out some really, uh, four really cool colors, I think. She picked out a, a, a beige or a neutral, and she picked out a red. I call that a Corinthian red, actually. That's what I call it, Corinthian red. It's one of the royal colors. I noticed that um, you picked out at least uh, two royal colors, and then she's got the eye... Um, I, what do they call this? Ionic blue. I call it an ionic blue. Uh, and then a slate gray. So I'm really excited about, I love every one of these actually. And, and I'm actually, Jimmy's in a, a vast studio audience as usual. I, he's, I, he's way back there. I don't know what he's doing up on the balcony. Jimmy, do you see me? Oh, uh, 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 is that you, Kevin? I, I can't make you out. Dude, I just want to ask you, wh which one do you like? Are you going to be voting often? Or? I, I, I will stuff the ballot box. <laughs> which color would you say? Do you, do you I, have a preference? Well, you know what? I, I do like the, um, the red. It's a little, it's a little bold. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I'm you like that too, Patrick? Yeah, so yeah, already yeah, we've got two votes on the red, huh? Yeah. I don't know why. It, it comes alive a little bit. I think it's a good setting. I think it could be a good color. You got some sad news. That's discontinued. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're really excited about that. So, vote. Is the voting up now, Patrick? Yeah, uh, BroadwayPolsterySchool.com slash in progress. In progress, the voting you guys can vote. And if you're on the forum, I'm going to be posting that on there, too. So. Actually, I know Patrick didn't print out any any questions for me this week, but I do remember somebody, uh, now that we're on the Broadway Upholstery School, they were talking about how they did an old mattress over with the... the was that on there, Patrick, or was that a YouTube comment about that mattress? Uh, you, yeah, might, I know, um, you might not have seen that. There's a question about scissors. I love it when people get innovative with, with the YouTube videos. So, so this person saw the hand tying video that we did on a chair. And she had an old mattress that had springs in it. She 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 transferred the knowledge on that video into the brick box spring, mm -hmm. and she retied her springs with based on that. I thought that was pretty cool. The most comfortable bed that you can have is a box hand tied spring box on a bed, Mine. and over that um, a mattress like a horsehair mattress, and then over that one of those goose feathers, right? See, you're talking about living. Yeah, that's real living, Jimmy. Hey, and while we're talking to Jimmy, I'm going to have Jimmy come up because, uh, Jimmy, would you mind coming up for a minute? Um, now that we've got that business out of the way, 
we're going to give you a preview of the online classes. Jimmy, Jimmy is doing a fantastic job on this beautiful hand carved mahogany chair. I'm I, really excited about. When you want to talk about it a little bit? Well, I'm surprised with the condition that it was in when I picked it up from my client, mm -hmm. and uh, he said it's you know it's been in the family for a long time. I want to take care of it, and we went through the fabric selections a little bit, and I gave him at least six or seven different examples of that, but. Um, when you and I brought it in and we had the, uh, uh, you know, the first class with this and saying like, oh God, what's in this? Uh, I, I was kind of surprised because it's got springs in the back, mm -hmm. uh, coconut fiber. This um, was, this was a frame. You went, you had to take everything out. We couldn't yeah. reuse anything. The, the webbing was gone. So Probably. the challenge on this was to try to, because to me, the organic um, natural fibers, whether it be horse hair, cotton or coconut fiber provides the best uh, seating and the best look. Right. Unfortunately, the expense of all that has gone sky high. So what our challenge is, is to make it look the same and feel the same right. using modern materials. Yes. Right? Which sometimes works and sometimes does and not. And we didn't resort all to modern materials, but we mixed it up a little bit. Like for instance, we use cotton, we use the foam and cotton on the back. Right. So. Um, I think though we're getting there. I think it looks really, it's really looking beautiful. I just want to show people, why don't you grab the, the pillow on the bottom there? The only original thing as far as filling is, is going to be his down cushion. And when you put that down cushion in there, look at the, look at the loft on that cushion, you guys. Isn't that nice? We're going to reuse that. It's the only thing we're reusing, right, Jimmy? Yeah. That and the wood frame, really. <laughs> so That's what I kept thinking to myself. I'm like, oh my God, this is really like down to nothing. I didn't. I thought I'd have at least the webbing mm -hmm. in some of the back. I said, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it couldn't be too bad. You know, I'm, we kept going and going and going. I, I was surprised when I kept stripping it down from one, one to another, especially starting with the arms. I'm like, oh my God, this is worse than So people can, when, when this is done, it'll probably be done late summer, Patrick, or mid-summer maybe? Yeah. S somewhere yeah, around then? You know what? Yeah. That's going to be a little ways off. Michelle's class is actually first. Right. So Jimmy's class might even be in the fall, but in I think you guys should really look for that class because in it, there's a lot of knowledge in this, Jimmy. So I'm going to show people something else, though. Let's take this because we stopped today. I was a little excited about Jimmy getting He's getting a really good skill going here. But I want to show you what he did. Look at this transition point right in here. I just want to show you. Um, that's a series of three cuts that Jimmy had to make. And and the way that the fabric kind of transforms or, or, or just kind of blends in with each other is what the goal is. In other words, you don't want to see an open cut there. You don't want to see a gap in there. You don't want to see a bubble in there. All those things you don't want. And Jimmy's doing a really good job. And not to mention, let's just turn it completely around and show people. And by the way, this is a question and answer, you guys. If there are any questions out there, please, we'll stop uh, and, and uh, answer those right away. I, don't, I think we're a little light. I think everybody's on vacation finally. So look, Jimmy, um, don't you got those clinches, so be careful, right? Yes, I'm going to use those things like... Yeah. So he's got his webbing properly stretched, and then he's got his springs anchored to the, to the webbing. And then on the top, which we can't see, he's got an eight-way hand tied. Yes. And the down cushion. You talk about, you talk about a we comfortable had, We had horse here. Well, yeah. the did we have synthetic. some horse? We had the yes, synthetic we had horse. The, the, uh, the land. So a variety. You know, Jimmy was asking, how do you know which materials to use and everything? Well, we made an interesting selection on the on the back because we we used a two inch piece of foam. We we put a little buffer underneath to to fill in that air pocket. But then we chose the cotton on the top because we can just use our fingers to trim the cotton rather mm -hmm. than attaching the cotton. Because if we use Daycron as a batting, you do need a batting over the foam. We talked about that. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot yes. about that in a minute. But the reason is we were running out of space in here for our tacking, right? right. So we don't want anything more, the less tacking we do, less stapling we do, the better. So if we use the bonded Daycron, Jimmy, mm -hmm. we would have had another whole row of staples. Now, Jimmy asked a really interesting question, and I think that you guys, I really would definitely, if you're just beginning in the upholstery uh, career, or if you're a journeyman, um, I think that they're great value in these classes. I think the ones we have posted up here, you, you, I mean, they're really unbelievable. You can talk to some of our people who have bought uh, yearly subscriptions will tell you that I think they're great value. I, I wouldn't just say that. 
But Jimmy asked a question today. I think the whole class might be worth might be worth it just for the answer, right? Okay. Jimmy, I, I'm going to see if he can answer this. But the question was, let's see if you can remember. The question is why why put anything over the foam? Why why put any type of batting on the foam? And I and and the answer is why why do you want? Because it it'll slip. It it'll slips. walk, right? Yes. Yeah, or slip. Walk. So every time you sit down on a padded, anything padded, and then you get up, fabric will walk one way or the other. There are actually four ways a fabric can walk. It can walk to the left or to the right. It can walk to the left, up or down. Okay. And I'm talking over time, you know, 50, 100, 150 seatings, 200 seatings. It's more common is, in a long bench with springs, for instance. You can imagine okay. all the sitting down and getting up. So eventually, what could happen if you don't have that buffer is that the fabric can actually tear, right? Okay. It can tear away one corner. Mm. So that's why you always want a buffer underneath <coughs> it. The only exceptions to that, you guys, mid-century furniture. Mid-century furniture, they went right over the they went right over the latex. Okay. And of course, the problem with that is, see, see, middle mid-century furniture came out. It's all minimized, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a new style. So their new style was, well, we don't want batting. We don't want the overstuffed look. So let's just put the, the foam, the latex foam in there and go and put the fabric on top of that. Well, that wasn't a great idea for two reasons. One is uh, it, the walking of the fabric. Mm -hmm. but the other one is that um, when you don't have a buffer, the moisture from the air and from people sitting goes into the foam. And the, in this case, the latex foam, right. it Which pulverizes and then it, and then it turns to dust. Yes. You also had that question during today. We answered that for you too. Didn't yes. We? Well, that's so, what I was thinking because sometimes you would see the foam when mm -hmm. you tear it away with no batting and an mm -hmm. old chair just mm -hmm. to change it, um, just to you know keep it. You can see how it like breaks down. You see how right. like the foam, like you say, there's nothing between it, and how right. it kind of like flattens out, and then it gets starts to kind of like turn, mm -hmm. and then not just the fabric itself which wears away, but also the foam underneath. Now you've got a double problem. Yeah. Uh, so during the course of your classes, or you know, we have Michelle and Jimmy, and we're going to be adding people to a uh, maybe. But the thing is that he asked the questions as the as the apprentice. He's asking me the questions, and I'm available to answer them. Mm -hmm. um, we get, how many do you think, Jimmy, on each class? How many of these, qu these good deep? 20, 30 questions. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. So that's how you learn. So if anybody, if this is the first time somebody's watching this question and answer, I definitely would Watch would the whole thing you. and then decide. Go to, go to broadwayupholsteryschool.com and check out the classes that we already have posted and, and check it out. You might want to maybe purchase one. I think, there's, is there a sale going on now, Patrick, with these? No, there was. Uh, there was a sale. Months ago. But it's still a good value even without the sale. I think it's it's great value when, when Jimmy's asking those questions that you're going to be asking, and that's the beauty of the online classes. So, so Jimmy, uh, do you have any other input or any other feelings about no. your progress? Well, it, it's definitely going to be a little bit different shape because I know this was a little bit more square. Yes. Because this was also, it, it was a different with the springs were in the middle mm -hmm. and you had the coconut fiber around it. The only, the only, Style-wise, I think we're going for a better style, which is a which is what we call a pullover okay. style. Before it had a piping on the front, yes, but it was a very small boxing, and and it was a very small treatment that I didn't think looked good with the chair. Mm -hmm. The chair has a lot of curves, and it made the back look boxy. Mm -hmm. you it know did. I, mean? I remember that. So it had it had a piping like this. Um, so so with the pullover, I think it just goes ni nicely with the overall look of the chair with the yes. curves. You know? Well, with the, with what we're going to be, you know, finishing up next week with the outside arms, and maybe the back. We'll see what goes on. And then we have the, the trimming, which I think when again you see it all, how it all comes together. Yeah, actually, and you know what? You stay right there for a second. I'm going to show people the trim. Okay. I'm going to show people what Jim is going to be using to trim this chair up. Yes, I need that color, Mr. K. So Jimmy's chosen the well, his client. Now, Jimmy, I got some good news for everybody. Now, this is uh, I hope Jimmy doesn't think this is too personal, but because it's his business, but I think he's a very open guy. So Jimmy's at a point in his skill level that you feel confident in being hired 
as an upholsterer. It was it was a fate, a twist of fate that I. My friend and I have been talking for years, and I said, "Oh, I'm into this," and he said, "Oh, geez, I got these pieces," and back and forth, and your casual talk. Mm -hmm. And then he finally turns around and says, "I want you to do one of my pieces." And that is for anybody. Uh, that's such an honor and such a privilege and such a, a compliment because he's he's and this is a family chair of his, right? Yes. So he's trusting you with his favorite aunt's chair. Or? Yes, and he so. also has a smaller, I believe sofa so the pressure's on yes and so we did a, recently you guys we did a pricing video um, and you might want to go on that I'm not sure what Jimmy charged bless you I'm not sure what Jimmy charged for his chair but he doesn't have to tell us but pricing is a very tricky thing yes um, and it's tricky um, on so many different levels I mean if you're just starting out if you're if you're a journeyman even you know journeyman usually is that six to ten years into a, into a trade right right um, you know your your pace is slower. It might it takes you long, and then when you figure out your hourly wage, you go, oh my goodness, I you know. Yeah, I, I got to make this much money, <laughs> but oh my god, I can't charge them. That's and right. You, but I believe you mentioned that too. Yeah. yeah, but the pricing video, we talk a little bit about that, how long it, sh it should take once you get beyond the, even the journeyman, maybe late journeyman, mm -hmm. into like your master upholsterer, early master upholsterer career. Mm -hmm. You start speeding up. Well, your techniques become a little bit better. You they be, they become better. You, you you learn different, better ways of doing it, and that's another thing that online classes teach you. Okay. It's, it's just that I cannot inst I cannot instantly give you speed, but what I can give you is the knowledge, and then the speed comes in you guys in just repetitive work. That's right. gonna, Speed, technique, what do I do with this, right. how did I do that? So Jimmy's going to use, when when you have a chair like this where you're trimming off the fabric, mm -hmm. you can't just put nails in it. Oh no. Okay, you oh. could do that on, on this part which we just flipped under. Well that's the other but, thing. But okay. you can't do it here, you need something to cover up the threading, the thread work, and that's what this is. Right. So what, what Jimmy's going to do, he's going to um, secure the gimp first. I'm jumping ahead here, right, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. Usually what I do is I pin tap or pin staple, like so, right? You gotta make sure that your, your gimp is right along that edge, right? Okay. Now, isn't that wonderful? I wanna show people something here. Okay, so take a look at that, Jimmy. Wow, okay. Then he's gonna take his nails, and, and by the way, you guys watching, questions and answers. This is your time to get live, live. Uh, you I know, already got a right? question. Wait, hold on one second. Okay. I want to get you nails first if I can find them. There you go. What's your question, Jim? Now, I believe on one of the one of the shares that I did years ago, a few years ago, um, we're gonna we glued it, but we're not gonna do that this time. We what? We glued. You can you can glue. Okay, so gluing, yes. you can glue the gimp on. Yes. I do that when you're just beginning. Oh. So now that you're a little bit more advanced. Oh. You don't have to spend the time to glue it. Okay. You can pin tack it. Pin pen, pin tack with the six ounce tack is probably more recommended for you at this okay. point. But it's kind of like the mid. So you got you can glue it. Mm -hmm. This is before the tack, you guys. Glue it. Mm -hmm. You can pin pin tack or pin staple. Pin stapling is kind of like an advanced technique. Is it? What I just did. <coughs> Because okay. I have to turn the gun, I, uh, it's not the recommended use of the gun. The staples on all the way in. Okay. They're going to be taken out as you put the tacks in. Oh, okay. Okay. As okay. you put your tacks in. I was wondering. I said, why is he stapling it? So, what I, have you done tack work before, Jimmy? I've done it a couple of times. It's been very. It's been a few years. You know what I'd like you to do? Mm -hmm. I'd like you to try on camera live. I put a little pressure on you. Live, once you get a couple of tacks in, and, and remember you're spacing them, right? Yes. Are you spacing them? So there's a, different ways you do it. You chain, you can either chain them, you can do every other tack, or you can do every other two tacks. Every two tacks. So you have to kind of judge, you know, where that the is. Distance, so I want yes. you to get at least three tacks in there. Okay. Just to see how you do. And I definitely, your, your down cushion, if you want to nail, keep that down there, mm -hmm. Jimmy, I would keep it on the floor. Okay. Because you have to get, when you put tacks, just to remind you, first of all, I'm going to bring this out to the edge a little bit. Oh. And when you're doing tack work, you guys, you have to be a little bit above eye level because that's better, the, easy the, to tack. The head of the tack. Better to tack. But also, that's how everybody's going to see it. 
Yes. Okay, so you, you don't want to take your chair and turn it up, right, and put the tax in. Yeah. But then you put it down and say, oh, my tax are crooked. Right. It's, it's, it's how you're looking at it like this. Right. So if you don't mind, Jimmy, you know, we just could show you guys, give you a taste of what the online classes are like. Uh, with Jimmy and Jimmy can be asking me questions. That's usually the way it is. Sometimes I go off camera just to give him a little space, which I'm going to do now. You are. I'm going to give you a little. Alone? I want to give you a little space, Jimmy. Oh no. Um, only because he's got to be on his own sometime, right, guys? Uh, yeah. That's what are good. you looking for, Jimmy? Um, I was going to try a technique. I think you and I talked about it where. Um, I hadn't done this in a while, but I did have a hard time with uh, the last tacking job I did. But I, when I asked, when you asked me to put a couple of tacks here, yeah, you asked me to see if I could use pliers and hold the nail and want to see what technique. I works. don't actually use that technique, but if that works for you, by no, all well, means. You show what technique you're just showing. I'm just gonna, let's show my technique first. Okay. I'm going to get one tack in here to show. First. Okay. So what you want to do? I can't tack up here. I can't tack sideways. I need to get right into my piece of furniture. Look at, I want to show people what I did. This isn't even good enough for me. I'm, 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 so I'm actually squatting down even more. Usually I'd pull up a chair. But Jimmy, I know Jimmy likes to nail down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tack set up like in there, very gently at first. Do not use your magnet under your hammer. Use your hammer and, right? Mm -hmm. And I tap. And then I'm still not comfortable. I want to bring it out a little bit more because I need to get at the tack, right? Mm -hmm. So, wow. And then now you see the dome of the tack wants to wants to go off. So you have to adjust your hammer. So I'm going to go like this, and then I'm like this. And it, it's not heavy tacking, you guys. It's more tapping, not not hammering. It's more tapping. It's not a nail sense. per se. Right. So that's good, Jimmy. We want to see how Jimmy does on his tack, the next tack. this up? You got this up, Patrick? I will once you start reading it. Oh, Pam, you've got a difficult job here. What has she got? Well, I'm going to let you finish that, Jimmy. Then I'm going to critique. Not bad. So I your guess. spacing is, is off. You know that. Well, this is the way the style of, of the chair that this is how it was before. Right. Actually, I may have to change it again. So, so, so like th this is almost on top of one another. Yes. And, and then, then this is yeah. this is the desired. Yes. That's what you want to do. Yeah. So you would have to take this out. But you know, it's okay. Those come out all the time and they come out with relative ease. And the mm -hmm. best way to take one out if you make a mistake is with the tack remover. Right. And just you have to kind of surgically take it out, not not hammer it. This is a very gentle, uh, gentle. Well, let's do it right. And then you yeah. know what? It, the, the tacks are very kind of the head isn't really that strong on there enough. That's why you have to kind of yeah. hammer it in. Yeah. At different and angles. people might be wondering. I know I always hear from people about this. They always say, "Why doesn't he have a plastic tip on that?" Because they do sell these hammers with plastic tips. Yes, I've seen them. But I don't suggest that because what happens is it gives you more of a bouncing. It, it bounces off the tack, okay. so it doesn't give you the accuracy. So what you end up, yeah, you end up with the tack that's not as scratched. Yes. Because this, they do scratch. Yes. But then they oxidize. They get, they get better with time. You don't see the scratches. So, so. Well, you're really it. not going to use that much force. You have. You do. It depends on the wood. Okay. Sometimes the wood. Well, this is. This, this is, is going in good. I'm surprised. Yes. Being a mahogany, but but on your hammer, the plastic tip tends to bounce off the tack, so you're not as accurate with the tack work. Right. It's a little harder to do plastic tips. I don't. I don't I, advise. I, I've them. never used one, so I really. Yeah. But it doesn't seem as strong to me. But this is one of the things, you guys. 
that you do not get in most YouTube videos, including my own channel, I'll admit that, even on my own channel, because Jimmy is going through the process. He's asking the questions, you know, and I can't, I'm a big believer in these classes, and I'm a big believer in the supplies that we sell. Yes. I'm a big, because it's time tested, over 40 years of my testing this equipment, I end up with the best equipment, I think. You know. And the skill, we, we have all the skills in the YouTube channel, except this type of thing where you're asking the question and a lot of the little tricks are lost in the YouTube video. It's not intentional, but when I'm teaching by myself on YouTube and I'm showing people, you'll see in a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a chair out here, Jimmy. I'm going to ask you to sit down in a minute and then I'm going to bring this chair out. And I'm going to start stripping it down okay. by myself. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pretend like they're, they're, I'm going to ask the questions you know, while I'm doing it, that a beginner might ask Oh, as I, a teaching technique. Well, so, I hope a beginner has an open mind with regard to when they strip a chair down because... Stripping a chair down is a big thing, isn't it? it I, I still remember the time when I took a chair that it was, I thought was very heavy, and I said, there is something wrong here, mm -hmm. but it was an older chair, you know, something... Was there gold or money in it? No, unfortunately, another empty treasure, <laughs> but uh, one of these days I will find something, I hope. But the chair itself, I mean, there were so many staples in it, um, and I just couldn't believe the way they had done it. something I had never seen, and, and again, it was one of the things that I've never done, is the metal strip. Yeah. So I think, you know, maybe... Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, me. this chair, when I had redone it over again, it was all hand-stitched in the back. There was yeah. no metal strip yeah. on, um, and it was a lot lighter. Yeah. Well, it was quite the experience. Yeah, you took out a lot of the metal. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe it. I said, yeah. oh, my God, this is, you know at least 15 pounds different. It's unbelievable. Jimmy, I'm going to ask you to sit down now okay. because I know you've been working hard. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. But I want Jimmy off camera. I'm going to be asking Jimmy a couple of things because Jimmy belongs to the forum. And the last time I looked, Patrick, there were 89 people signed up for the forum. Yeah, people keep joining. It's awesome. We want people to keep joining that. We, I, hopefully we're on, we're on up the ball as far as accepting people, right, Patrick? Yep, and I think Jimmy's been accepting people too. This Jimmy, I do. oh, I he's do. an administrator, I think, yeah. right? Yes. So keep that good work up, Jimmy. But I wanted to mention to Jimmy. So we trust them, you know. Yeah, Jimmy um, has become a fast friend of Pam's, and Pam has posted something on here that looks a lot like Michelle's chair, Patrick. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah, the arts and uh, not the other. No, the tufted, yeah. the tufted the chair. The new class. It's not up yet, right? No, it's not. When is that going up? That's the next one. That's the next one that's going to go up, actually. Pam, you got to finish filming it. You got to check that out. Now, as I recall, though, Pam, you just put buttons in. Now, she just put the difference is that Pam, the difference between Michelle's chair and Pam's chair. And those are up now. Pam, if you notice that she, first of all, I have to say, very difficult job to do. It's a very thin, thin and hard to get in there and work. She did a great job. But what she did is she upholstered it first and then she just put buttons on the surface. Now what Michelle did, Michelle has hand tufted. Uh, she hand tufted, meaning she's got a pleat. She's got four pleats on the interior buttons, like, and that's why they call it diamond tufting. Um, and, and she did an unbelievable job. Pam, I love the way this came out. And, and I know that she had some questions with us on this about the curve. She was a little nervous, but let's just read what she says. Um, she said, I just began, by the way, you guys have any questions, just feel free uh, to interrupt me at any time. Um, I just began upholstering this chair now that all the frame repairs are complete. I'm using a sombrella fabric and skipping the buttons to give it a more updated look. So yeah, she's doing the reverse of what you said. That she, she's oh, the, I'm looking the at pick is, the button picture is the uh, previous. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't tell from the picture, Pam. Forgive me, but I, it looked like that was the finished piece. But now she's going. Okay, let me just finish. Fabric and skipping the buttons to give it a more updated look exclamation points. Thanks for the tips on how to stretch the fabric on a curve. So she's even doing a harder job without the buttons because I have to tell you something folks. Buttons oftentimes disguise the wrinkles, right Jimmy? Yes. I mean I wish I wish I could put buttons on my face at this point, right Jimmy? Oh, don't worry, Kevin, put a, you don't put a, want that 
<laughs> I'm not that vain. <laughs> uh, well, neither am I. It's like, hey, nature will come when it, when it wants to. But you know, we got wrinkles coming down here. I got a wrinkle here. I, I think, Jimmy, a well-placed button right here. Right, Jimmy? I, I could do it right now, Kevin. I know. <laughs> Anyhow, Pam, good job. A really good job. So now I think at this point, unless there's a question uh, in the or any other comments, Patrick. Nope. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Jimmy's chair and throw it downstairs. What? Now. <laughs> I'm just gonna place it down, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start another job that came in. I want to show you guys. I had a job come in um, the other day. Customer's own material, or C O M, as we say in the business. Let's put this down. Jimmy's cushion. Jimmy, you're gonna be finished with that soon. Yes, we're moving along with it, which is nice. I have a cute little chair that came in, you guys, and I'm a little interested in this because it's heavy. These are one of those, if you guys see one of these along the curb, um, grab it because the scale on this, I'm gonna take my tape measure out and actually, I'm not sure if you guys can see the scale on this, but I, I'll read you out some measurements on this. Very interesting chair, scaled. It's what we call a boudoir chair, or a bedroom chair, or a small side chair. It's really beautiful. It's really well done. I love the proportions of this. It probably at one point had a ruffle skirt on it, and thankfully they took that out. I'm not a fan of ruffle skirts. Are you a fan of, uh, are you a ruffle skirt kind of a guy, Jimmy? Uh, only on the right uh, subjects. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, they were a style, they were a style for a while, but... Uh, Thank you for, for, for curbing your answer on that one. Yeah, I was a little... I, I still have the G-rated show, isn't it? <laughs> right. Um, I, I, meant for, I meant on furniture. I think that was a style in the 60s for a while, because I think it right. faded. It seemed to fade really... It was an accent... And I think people wanted oh. to hide the legs of the chair. Yeah, the yeah, it had a fluffy, you know, fluffy look, you know. There's, uh, there's, there's so many different, a few different types of skirts. One is a straight skirt, which mm -hmm. is straight just like it sounds, and little right. pockets here on the corners. Right. One is a gathered skirt, right, gathered. Um, one is a ruffle skirt. A gathered skirt's not as, uh, a ruffle skirt's got more, more, you know, more in. I don't know if you know what I mean. Actually, you know what, you guys? Uh, I have one out. It's not in here, you guys. I do have another. I have a chaise with the ruffle skirt on out in the van that I could have showed you. But um, And then there's a waterfall skirt, which is a little harder to do. And I think, Patrick, don't we have a YouTube video about a waterfall yeah, skirt? A lot, a lot you guys time. should check that out. That's pretty cool. It's a very rare skirt that we do. It, it, it actually, it's like a half slip cover, half upholstery job. This, the arms are the skirt, the seat is the skirt. It's really interesting. But anyhow, scale, right? This is a beautifully scaled small chair that anybody could sit in. Even a big guy like me, I could feel I'm comfortable in this chair. A lot of people don't realize it's not the size. It's, it's how it's made, it's how it's built. Um, you know, today, the new furniture today, are, you know, it's not attractive because what they do is they start with pretty much a box just a box frame because you know right angles are easier to do than curves right guys and they just they then they add the filling and they and and the problem with that is they have to add a lot of filling in order to make it curvy looking or at least looking a little bit curvy looking so you end up with this big monster i was in uh boston south end to, uh, the other day over the weekend and um the person couldn't get a sofa in, into her south end apartment because it was so big and um, so she, she opted for an, a, an older piece of furniture that was scaled properly. And it's a beautiful looking sofa that she's going to use, uh, but at least it gets through the door. And, and it does the same even better. It does a better job of seating than the modern furniture. I don't want to go too that. far yeah. into that. We have a question, a live question. This is from Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Is there a good rule of thumb for the distance between the nails? Actually, it depends on style. Uh, in Jimmy's case, Jimmy uh, told me that the customer wanted it the same way. And um, so I would say here's, here are the three basic spacings. One would be chain, one right after the other. One would be skipping every other tack. And the other last one is every other two tacks, which is that's what you're doing, right, Jimmy? Every yes. Every other... To every yes, other I two to times. The, I want to be sure on the patent, so I, when I do it, right. um, it's the exact same way that he wants it. Right, and I wouldn't space them any more than that. That's no. your limit with the spacing. Yes. So the, that is the rule of thumb, no more than every two tacks. 
Um, but if you're doing the every two tacks, you need gimp underneath, you need something underneath to show in between, right? And even if you were going to chain um, the tacks, and we were talking about that earlier, when you trim a piece of fabric to the wood, you need something to cover that up even if you're chaining the tacks. Does that make sense to you guys? We just showed you live on what we were talking about there. So that's a good question. Um, who is that, Patrick, that just? Deborah. So Deborah, um, I hope that you are watching, uh, you're watching our online classes. And I know that you're probably watching uh, the YouTube videos. And I want to take this opportunity to ask you, have you subscribed? Because that's so important. I hate to beg. But for that, but it's such an important feature on our channel is the, is the subscribe. Everybody tells you they want you to subscribe. I tell you, I watch a lot of a lot of YouTube. I have some favorite YouTube channels, and I have to say, even I find myself not subscribing to some of them. Shame on me. I think that if you're watching something, um, if you're watching something on a regular basis, you should, because it just shows the support. And Patrick, do you know the count? that we have yet on the... On We're getting so close to 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 subscribers, you guys. That's pretty good. Isn't that a hockey, average hockey game, uh, Bruins hockey game, Jimmy? 10,000? Yeah. Uh, usually it's about 30. Okay. Oh, Maybe. That's okay. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Soon enough. We hope to get you, to the you 30. Don't have, you don't have concession for any concession yet, but that's okay. But the interesting thing, Jimmy, is that we have... We probably have about 1.2 million views at this point, Patrick, right? Yeah. I don't know if you have the statistics up there, Patrick, but of the 1.2 million, we have 10, not even 10,000 subscribers when you think about it. I know there's there maybe, maybe people, multiple views, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But still, the numbers don't seem to be, even if you half that number and you say 500,000, 10,000 subscribers is, is what, 10% uh, 10, 10 is 50,000. Mm -hmm. So you're probably 2.5% of the people uh, actually subscribe. That doesn't seem like a lot, does it? Well, I don't, you know, there's so much out there today. Yeah. You know, people, are, people are wanting to do things and they want to see, how does this work? How do I, can, how can I do this? Whether it's welding or upholstery. Well, can I ask you a question, Jimmy? Yes. Do you subscribe to a lot of the stations that you that you look at for these things? Uh, I do. There are some. I mean, there are cooking, a lot of cooking uh, yeah. channels that I look at. So I'm when working. you subscribe, you get notified if there's a new video. Oh, going. absolutely. So that's probably a and good that's thing. And at four in the morning making chicken parmesan, baby. Let's see what I can do. Oh, you're a man of many talents there, Jimmy. Uh, I try. I understand, I understand that you dance, too. I used to dance. I haven't done that in a while with this. <laughs> the, the COVID, uh, it's been a I know. few months. And, Terrible. Uh, people are trying to line themselves up again with uh, classes and, and how, how it's all going to work together. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of mystery right now for a lot of businesses. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's been tough. I hope, that, I hope our viewers are, are doing well, as, as especially our subscribers are doing well out there. But I did want to mention that we're grooming you, Jimmy, to, to do some extreme upholstering, and I hope that you're up for that. Oh, but we do well, have to give I, you a physical before you, you do this. Yeah. Well, well, but yeah, uh, I'll, do you want to know what you're going to be doing yeah, so first? I'll tonight, and I'll try to get some squats in. But there's such a thing called extreme ironing. I've mentioned this before. You mention that almost every time. No, I, I haven't mentioned <laughs> it in a while. For oh, you, go ahead. Tell them what it's all about, Kevin. Maybe we can do an American version well, of it. Well, our Australian friend, who is she on, Patrick? No, we always miss Janine. Janine, Janine because it's a totally time different difference. time zone, right? But she tells us this, that in Australia, this is where they perfected extreme ironing, where, where sometimes people jump out of airplanes with the ironing board and an iron. Yeah, Probably, you know, you're going to have to do it if you talk about this. I stuff. know. Probably a battery-operated, uh, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a battery-operated iron. Are you going to have my life insurance policy now? Is that what you're trying to tell Jimmy. I don't think they have a long extension cord on that iron, right? Well, I think it's probably battery power. But battery power or yeah. solar power, whatever. Well, uh, let's go battery power. <laughs> so they go out with a, a shirt that's wrinkled, with with the ironing board and the battery powered, uh, you know, iron and a, and a parachute. Don't forget the parachute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I left that on the plane. I couldn't carry everything. I got everything but the parachute. <laughs> That would be my luck. So you you you're falling down. Yeah, so dirty. We, can, we can watch the guy now fall. Like. <laughs> you're thirty thousand feet. You're falling. You got the ironing board. You got the shirt, and you you start to iron. And at at, at a reasonable height, I'm not sure what you pull the cord. Mm -hmm. And well, then you're done or not. whoever has the best iron short when they land is the winner. Are you kidding? No. 
<laughs> I thought Jerry Spring was bad. So, <laughs> so hopefully uh, they'll, they'll, you'll be doing that with the upholstery, right? We're going to give you a chair, or we're going to send you up there 30,000 feet. You know, maybe I can go, like, uh, send me on a travel, uh, you know, like the upholstery world somewhere. Oh, yeah, let's make it easy. Let's give you a, a venue, like a, a, a venue like Hawaii, for instance. Oh, we'll, there you go. We'll send you off with your chair and have you upholstered in these exotic places, like, yeah. maybe send you into the maybe deep... Maybe never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jimmy, I see this. If we had an unlimited budget, this would be a great idea, Patrick. <laughs> we could send Jimmy into the, the, the jungles. Sure, always send me to the jungles. <laughs> no, never, never, never to the nice resorts. We'll be in our nice, comfortable, air-conditioned studios as yeah. we watch Jimmy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there you go. Screw Jimmy again. Let's go. No, just kidding. Jimmy's a good sport, you guys, as you can see. We're having fun. It's all about having fun, too. And that actually, to be honest, when we're teaching, especially when we were teaching up to 12 people at a time, I think it's, 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 it's a benefit to have a light-hearted environment where people, I just think it makes learning easier, don't you, Jimmy? Oh, you got to have an atmosphere. Yeah. I am big on atmosphere. You I mean, know, if things are so depressing and, yeah. and morbid, it's a spot. Well, light -hearted. I can stay home. Yeah. You're coming in, too, for the, the entertainment value. Yes. So, well, look at all class. the classes that I've taken here. Yeah. It yeah. was so much fun with a different variety of people every time. Mm -hmm. And I, whether it was a morning class or an after Saturday afternoon class, mm -hmm. it was fun. I mean, yeah. everybody had a good time. Everybody yeah. was here to, to get away from whatever was going on in their life. Yeah, at some point, you know, if we can't if we can't get those classes going again, we were thinking about doing Zoom classes, right, Patrick? Yeah. Cool. I just got to throw this out, you know, but um, how would that work, Patrick? Would we have... Would we have 12 people at home at a time? Well, I already know. It's much easier for people who are, you know, I'm sure they don't have, who don't have an option to take an in-person class. Like someone like Janine, who I know they like the classes we already have, but... But would they like a live class? I think they would, because, I mean, it'd be very tough for them to come to an actual in-person class anyway. So, so I mean, if we had a live class with... Probably, I don't know how you'd do it. You'd probably have, you know, one project here, but it'd probably have to be by project, kind of. I don't know. I'm not sure how that would work. So, I, the other thing too, Patrick, I think we should consider this, and we ask you your input, you guys. I know a lot of people uh, will, will comment after they, they watch the live show, which we, we welcome that. If you guys can give us input on that, because the, the thought occurred to me, Jimmy, is that a lot of people are doing Zoom classes now. They're, they're at yes. home, so they're getting used to working uh, with that camera and, and doing Zoom classes. For instance, I had a checkup with my doctor uh, with the Zoom with the Zoom class, and she was doing yoga as, as she was talking to me about my, you know, about my health. Did she include you? And uh, no. <laughs> and so I'm watching her, and in the background, her daughter doesn't know she's she's doing a little dance in the background, you know. So people, I think, it's being incorporated into their daily lives. The Zoom class. Much more. Well, well, the way this is lengthened out. With this yeah. Out the way it has. Yeah. A lot of people have resorted to Zoom, and I'm sure down the road there'll be other things that um, they'll find other ways to, you know, show. I them. mean, can we split screen uh, 10, 10, can we do this, Pat? Yeah, you'd be able to see everybody. So we could split screen 10 people at a time. They could be, you know, they'd probably be customers of ours with the with the tools and the supplies and everything, and they got mm -hmm. their chair and they're ready to go. Yeah. Hey, we might give it a try. Why, why not? So I don't know if you would, uh, you would have maybe a dummy chair? You know what I mean? That it could just be applied to everybody? Well, the problem with that is, yeah, we could try that. But I mean, it would be tough to find uh, 10 people with the same project. That's, that's gonna be true. But yeah, yeah, because people have dining room chairs, wing yeah. back chairs. But so that's what we bench. We have that in uh, in a regular class. The only difference is in the regular class, you're able to obviously help them out and yeah. show them hands on. But yeah. this one, you kind of be able to, you'd probably just be there. You get the dummy chair. But you'd be there mostly to guide people along. So how, how, how do we overcome, now here's an interesting thing, how do we overcome the three-dimensional, it's such a three-dimensional thing. If somebody has a 3D TV, if they have a 3D, <laughs> right? You're going to jump through the TV. Do they have 3D TVs, Patrick? <laughs> no, do they have 3D TV? Do they have high-definition TV, yeah. right? Yeah. And I've seen recently, Patrick, on, on some Facebook postings, they actually show um, pitches can be made into three-dimensional. Did you know that, Jimmy? Yes. I wonder if they could do the same thing with the video. We're just talking about. We'll, we'll you have to have equipment for that. 
I'm not sure. I, you know, Virtual reality. Made, you know, now you'd have to say, oh, we have to get the equipment for the 3D to make it all happen. Yeah. Three, four years from now to be, oh, standard, by yeah. the way, standard, yeah. there you go. Maybe we're not there yet with the technology for the Zoom classes, but we would like our students and our regular viewers to give us some input there. Oh, it'd be fun. You know, yeah. If you're actually seeing the people who we who we uh, comes into the classroom and yeah. into, you know, four thirty slot time. Yeah. Just before the news. So we're we're kind of bottoming out here, guys. <laughs> Are we going to end this now, Patrick? The break. The breaks messed us up. You know? <laughs> maybe maybe I, I did want to stop tearing this chair apart. Let's just finish up with me tearing this chair apart. Well, tell, uh, them, how, tell them how to approach you, Kevin. Well, you know, usually you want to start at the bottom first on the cane brick. The cane brick comes off for us, right, you guys? Um, so usually that's. Let's see how that's put on. It's tacked. So we're just going to rip that, and we have a drop-in unit, a drop-in drop spring seat, you guys. It's oh God, another little, one. It's a little different, so it's attached to a wire frame, and it's got the springs, and they eight-way tied it. How about that? That's, that's not bad. Let's just bring it up this way. Maybe we could turn this into a Treasures of Upholstery, Patrick. See what we're going to find in this chair, right, Pat? Yeah. So this is hand stitched, you guys. This is a very well made piece, older piece of furniture, right? So they've got they've got the top actually blind tapped, and then down down here, see these little stitches, you guys? It's all been beautifully hand stitched. I hate to take it apart, but you know we need to reupholster. So let's just take this down there. The good thing about tacks and hand stitching is very easy to strip. So I'm just going to speed up in order to get to our fun part, which is the pockets of the chair, to see over the 80 or 90 year lifespan of the chair, to see if anybody lost anything in the chair, which is always fun to find. It's not necessarily a monetary thing for me. Sometimes um, you can learn a little bit from somebody by what, or a family by what's dropped into the chair. One time I found a bubble wrapper, which didn't mean much to me at the time, but to viewer, was talking about it was uh, one of the what was that candy factory in Boston uh, in traps? traps it was a candy wrapper from that factory oh my god and and somebody had saw me take this the only thing in this beautiful antique sofa was a little candy wrap right okay. and somebody saw that and said oh I, can't, I go so excited when you found that candy wrap <laughs> well that was that was such a piece of history I mean I remember my father who would every so often go out and of course buy the chocolates but he would also, as they called them, seconds by seconds. So mm -hmm. it would be like an empty cardboard box filled with mm -hmm. three to five pounds worth of variety of chocolates. Mm -hmm. It was kind of fun. I mean, it was always a, that building was like, wow. That, that's so, when you knew you were home. So that would have meant a lot to you, too. That oh, absolutely. would have brought back these memories. Now, All the time. this particular person, his memory was living nearby and smelling the candy, smelling the factory. Well, that's what the... My th grandmother number one lived within a half a mile of the Shrafts Candy Factory. You could smell it? Yes. Wow. But also number two, if you want to think of another piece of history, on the other side of Charlestown, towards Boston North End, was the Molasses uh, Fire or something? Well, the Great Boston Molasses Flood, which some people, yes. when they hear that, they joke, but many people died. Right. And, and many horses died. There were yes. people and horses. And when people first hear this, they, they kind of... They, they think it's funny, something like that but the, many people died, and it was on a hill, it was this big, huge wooden vat, and it blew up. Revere cane sugar, wasn't and, it? And the, and the molasses just went, uh, you know, people think, oh, how come you couldn't outrun a molasses flood? But this was a very fast running this molasses. Rushed, this killed people. Yeah, and, and um, some people think to this day, Jimmy, now you're talking about 100 years ago at least. Right. On some people think to this day that you could still smell the molasses on a hot day. You think that's true? I believe I know wow, that's true. Wow, Jimmy. Because it's just it's been embedded into the area. It, it, I probably and into I the sewers and everything it went right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, wow. anybody ever read it, they, they were saying like, "How did this ever happen?" But they, you see, again, you see, all because of a candy wrapper that right. we found. You're talking about the history of the of the whole area. Now. Yeah. So let's see what's in here. I'm really interested now. Okay. So this is live, so anything can happen, right? Yes, remember we have a router outside. <laughs> so here we go, opening up where things fall in, not quite. 
not quite, it's the next one, look at that. This is just a stretch of material that they use. So this should be, this should be it, Jimmy. Let's, let's see what's in here. Come on, Kevin, you want to retire early. <laughs> oh, you know what? Nothing? I don't see anything, Jimmy. Oh, uh, now we got to go back to work. Well, <laughs> let's try the side. Let's give this a little try. All right, let's see, right here. Okay, so if it was a left-handed person, the, the gold a pocket watches would be falling out, the diamond <laughs> rings would be falling out. Gold pocket watches. The, the, the good old... Uh, we moved right up from candy wrapping to the gold watches real quick. Let's see what's in here. I'd be happy with the candy wrapper, though. Okay, well, you know, nothing, Jimmy, nothing. Well, go well, back to work. There's one more side now. Let's say right-handed person. Now tell me, tell me something about the fabric, Kevin, because that, that seems very This fabric is the original fabric, and it's, God, really. it's actually falling apart in my hands. It's so old. It's so dried out. How old would you say it was? This, plus? the chair, it's as old as the chair. It's 80, 90 years old. Oh my God. 80, 90 years old, yeah. some uh, history here in the room. Yep, so let's see, Jimmy. Drum roll, Jimmy, is coming up. Well, I have to tell you guys. Not only is there any anything candy wrap or anything, but it's the cleanest old chair that I've ever seen. There's not even any dust. Uh, but that's good for me and the allergies, right guys? Well, so, that's right. You, you, you don't want a dust bowl for a chair. No, I'd rather not. So there you have it. Uh, this is a good, funny class, I thought, and we, uh, your comments as usual um, are good. I hope that while we present these classes too, that you learn something. I mean, uh, Heaven Jimmy here certainly promotes, I think, uh, a style of learning that you all, you know, as adults, you know, sometimes people want to come home and just relax too, right? We're not, we're not cracking the whip here, Jimmy. No, but I think if there's something that somebody wants to learn how to web a simple kitchen chair mm -hmm. or a dining room chair, it doesn't have to be as complex as what you have next to you. I think it's a good thing to kind of, you know, get people started, get an idea of what has to happen and what they should do. Thank you. You know, this is a good time for me to thank Jimmy. Jimmy's been one of my earliest supporters here in Arlington, Massachusetts. When we first started offering classes, I think he was the fir very first student, Jimmy, I think. One of the first students. Yes. And he's maintained a relationship with us, and we've been up and down with the classes, and now we're on a new adventure, which I should mention, Patrick. Uh, what is that we're doing now? Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you talk about it a little bit? Well, in terms of what we're going to be doing with Jimmy, the first episode, that's actually the first Q&A since that's been posted. Furniture Salvation. Furniture Salvation. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I and like Jimmy, it's going to be starring you and Jimmy mm -hmm. on your antics, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. Yeah. And um, that's already, like we said, now we're, we're going to need you guys to pick out a, a, a color velvet for us. Yes, so, on our first project. With the Chippendale, right there? And the cushions. Uh, Michaela wanted us to remind us of the cushions. Did we talk about the cushions, Patrick? Yep, you did. Oh, We're now right. offering cushions. Yeah. Custom cushions and uh, offering every, every, pretty much everything to do with upholstery, right? The We're pretty excited <laughs> about that, Patrick. So I think unless there's more business, Patrick, I think that that probably will wrap it up. Yeah, and um, the poll's going up right now, so vote for which velvet color we should use. Sconced in velvet, right, Patrick? I guess so. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time, and, and uh, happy upholstering.